Oh boy, I don't think I'm going to make a lot of friends with this one. Of all the episodes we've seen so far this season, this one kind of feels like my least favorite. But unlike other shows, when I say it's my least favorite, I don't mean that it's because it's a bad episode. It's actually quite good, and even has very clever moments. But something about the way it was presented just gives me the impression that it wasn't quite living up to its fullest potential. What exactly do I mean by that? Well, let's get started to find out. Ashi is searching for Jack since his disappearance when she's confronted by the woolies that Jack previously saved from slavery. We see a flashback explaining the history of Jack saving the woolies, and I must admit that it's amazing to see events of previous seasons remastered with updated artistry. The way the shadows loom over Jack and how his form feels more focused and fluid as he fights off the monkeys really looks like they redid these portions of the episode with cleaner animation, and it has much more lively frame-by-frame -frame action, making the impact more intense. Achi takes their words to heart, learning a bit more about what kind of impact Jack has had in the world. When she's told Jack got off of the blimp in this area, she thanks the woolies and jumps out, with the constructor following it up with a really funny line. As Ashi lands, we cut over to Scaramouche, who's apparently still alive. He hops off remembering that Jack has lost his sword, and plans to tell Aku about it. Now, try to bear in mind with me, because we're going to be coming back to this later. We see Ashi again, as she's traveling through this forest, until she eventually comes across some beetle drones being destroyed by warriors specializing in arrows. She approaches them, and the archers reveal themselves as the three blind archers that Jack previously helped. And at this point, I was really loving the episode for the direction it was going. This was gonna be an episode where Ashi would come across characters from previous seasons that Jack has helped on his quest. This is a great idea! Not only does it give the audience a sense of nostalgia and a chance to revisit familiar settings and cast members that they loved in the past, but it's great character development for Ashi. She gets to see the world through the perspective of others, and she sees the glimmers of hope that still remain in a world savaged by Aku's tyranny. She sees that hope lives on in those that Jack has rescued and inspired. It gives her more proof that Jack is the good guy in all this by having the evidence presented by someone else rather than just taking Jack's word for it. She begins to better understand what kind of person Jack is, a humble and honorable warrior who fights for others and what he believes is important. She recognizes how this inspiration reflected onto others and realizes that it's been reflected onto her, too. It's changed her entire outlook on life, and she owes him a great gratitude. All of these realizations were coming at me at once, and I was excited to see who else would appear in the episode to show us how much of a difference Jack has made. But before that, we cut back to Scaramouche again as he makes his way to a port, most likely the one from The Scotsman Saves Jack. And I will admit that the time spent on Scaramouche here offers some really good comedy. The line, all this walking is hard on my neck, has a humorous irony to it, that bit of him beatboxing while rolling down the hill was funny, and learning that he's not Aku's top assassin has a nice punchline to it. But the rest of the segment is just Scaramouche trying to get on a boat and getting foiled each time, and it ends up dragging for way too long. At one point, it doesn't even make sense. That not dogs rule wasn't there before, and it literally pops out of thin air. But I will admit that the ending of the segment is funny too. After Scaramouche gets on board using someone with an oddly shaped head, Scaramouche says to himself he looked like a talking penis, and that moment is so funny in its odyssey and surreal timing. Not to mention that it's humorously weird just hearing the words talking penis on Samurai Jack of all shows. We cut back to Ashi as she finds herself coming across the rave, and when she asks for Jack again, she's confronted by that team that Jack reunited with her father, who's now a grown elder. What follows is a really well-paced musical number with a brilliant tone. Everyone at the rave holds up their hands symbolizing an S for Samurai. As she calls out the Samurai drop, everyone begins to bow their heads, as if paying respect to their long-lost hero. She sings a song about the legend of Jack destroying Aku's hypnotizing music and how their loyalty to him remains strong to this day. The singer's vocal reach is beautiful to listen to, and the visuals are vibrant and lively. The transition into the backstory within the song is done well, panning over to the dancers before covering them in shadow with red eyes. The song also has an alternative presentation of what Jack may look like with long ponytail hair and a more elegant feminine form along with a dress, which I actually think works because it matches the nature of the song and its tone. And then everyone dances with a style inspired by Jack's fighting technique in which Ashi joins in. 
Seeing Ashi enjoying herself by getting into the music and dancing with everyone is like seeing her being given a chance to experience simpler parts of life. She's having fun, she feels moved by the song and how it presents inspiration passed down by Jack, being able to fully embrace her spirit in a way she was never able to before. Experiencing something new that seems odd to her at first but slowly adapts to it and understands how much fun it is. This is the greatest joy she's experienced all of her life with no worries of her previous life as an assassin or her overbearing mother. She thanks the Wraith for telling her the story and wanders off with reassured confidence that she'll find Jack. She eventually comes across a spring where she remembers a pretty traumatic moment in her childhood where she and her sisters are told that they must be one with the darkness to properly serve a coup. Ashi is the first of the seven daughters to be shoved into a pit of steaming hot coal. When I first saw this, I was like, holy shit! Not only does this further show how brutal Ashi's upbringing is, but it's also a pretty clever twist. All this time, I thought Ashi and her sisters were wearing skin-tight jumpsuits as part of their training, but all their lives they were cloaked in burned, blackened skin. That's actually an unexpected thing for us to learn about Ashi's supposed clothing and really shows how fucked up her mother was. Ashi then jumps into the spring and removes the tar from her body and now it's just starting to feel weird. I mean, assuming her skin would still look that good after she was shoved into burning coal, I have to ask. Why did her skin never outgrow the black parts of her body? I mean, her limbs and her form obviously got taller or extended as she grew up. Did the tar just stretch out along with the body? And for that matter, how was the black skin removable if it was literally burned onto her skin? Even then, how could her skin heal so quickly from all of that peeling? I know it's weird to talk about, but of all the things that Samurai Jack has done, this one just feels really awkward to think about. Her change of clothing looks nice though, choosing to represent her curiosity of the outside world and its nature by wearing a fluorescent dress made from leaves and vines. After that we cut to Scaramouche who's just lying around on the ship until he sees a payphone that he can use to call a coup. He tries to call him, but there's too much talking on the ship so Aku can't hear him, and when Scaramouche tries to silence them, he is confronted by a pack of dogs and is thrown overboard. This Scaramouche segment, unlike the last one, doesn't have anything funny in it. It's just more of him being interrupted or getting foiled. And this is where I started to have my problem. The segments with Scaramouche always feel like they're interrupting a more interesting storyline, one that's more relevant to the overall plot. They take up too much time and they haven't amounted to anything at this point. It gives me the impression that so far bringing Scaramouche back was a mistake and wasted potential for the story. His presence here doesn't do anything that benefits the overall plot, and the jokes that accompany it eventually lose their edge to them since it doesn't meld with the rest of the episode's establishment. And on top of that, it just feels unnecessary. The season has already set up a bunch of plot points yet to be resolved, and Scaramouche still alive trying to tell Aku about the sword just feels unnecessary. Either Aku could have just found out about Jack losing his sword from any other source, or if Jack eventually gets his sword back anyway, all of Scaramouche's efforts will result in being entirely pointless. It's just wasting time that could be spent on Ashi learning more about Jack's influence on the world. And it ultimately results in the one thing that holds this episode back, which I will get to eventually. Ashi comes across a bar and finds out that it's run by the sam u -rai. When Ashi reveals she's looking for Jack, everyone in the bar assumes she's trying to pick a fight with him, revealing to her all the battle scars they got in the battles against him. It has a pretty unfortunate implication with one of the goons, and apparently Popeye making a cameo as a robot. Huh, go figure. Then the Samurai reveals his story to Ashi with a pretty funky presentation that just screams 80s trends. Though the trends are presented in a nice and artistically interesting fashion. Wacky silhouettes, funky music, over-the-top backgrounds that would make great screensavers, and even this cool shot of Jack cloaked in a cool color scheme of blue and pink. It really speaks to me as the two colors really blend well with Jack's appearance in this shot, displaying a strong sense of patience that he showed the samurai when they first met. We then get a cameo from Dimango, which doesn't really add up to anything, and Ashi comes across a mysterious figure who tells her that Jack went north. 
She finds herself in a graveyard and discovers that Jack is about to commit seppuku. She's confronted by the green mist figure as it's revealed that he's one of many samurai spirits of the deceased, who have guided Jack here to relieve him from his dishonor for failing his purpose. But Ashi confronts Jack while fighting off the spirits, reminding him of the difference he's made in those he's helped in the past. She tells him about how he saved her, that he showed her the truth, that there's more to life than she could have possibly comprehended without his help how those children are still alive and they saved them together. What Ashi is doing here is showing how much of a new resolve she's made for herself through Jack and those that he's helped in the past. And she wishes to return that resolve to him to breathe hope back into his spirit, to redeem himself and accomplish his mission. And when she succeeds, Jack stands against the spirits to save her. That brief shot of Jack blocking the spirit's blow symbolizes the light that he has given to Ashi. This light she has shared with him has restored his spirit and gives him the willpower to fight back and not give up on himself. The spirits recognize that Jack is still capable of fulfilling his purpose and back away, allowing him and Ashi to set off on their new task, finding his father's sword. So what exactly was my problem with this episode? Well, there's only one problem with the episode summed up in two words, and it's unfortunately a big problem. Wasted potential. This was an episode about Ashi seeing how much of a difference Jack has made in the world, but it doesn't feel like she's seen enough of what Jack has done. At the most, she's come across four sets of characters from previous seasons when Jack made a difference in a lot more than that. All that time on Scaramouche coming back could have just as easily been spent on Ashi coming across another set of characters that Jack has helped in the past. She could have come across the sea creatures, or that tribe whose kid got kidnapped by the ninja, or the colony of talking dogs, or the Spartans, or something beyond just those four. Even the scene in the bar could have been a gathering of people from themes of different episodes in the first four seasons who had stories of Jack passed down to them from previous generations. One of them is literally dressed like one of the Spartan soldiers. The idea this episode was going for had many more possibilities to it, and it doesn't take advantage of them. The episode The Aku Infection did a much better job of capturing the full potential this episode's idea was going for. In fact, it was actually done perfectly. But even without that in mind, I still think Scaramouche coming back was a bad move on the writer's end, as it's brought to the table a new concern I'm beginning to have for this season. The thing is, there's only four episodes left, and the season has introduced a whole bunch of storylines that have yet to be fully resolved. Jack's missing sword, the Scotsman and his daughters raising an army, Ashi facing her mother, the Guardian, who was set in an interview to return in season five after the cliffhanger his episode ended on, Jack's inner ego that's been haunting him over the last several episodes. Even that mysterious figure who helped Ashi find Jack counts for something as he plays a key role in reuniting the two heroes, but we're never shown his identity. Oh, and don't forget the main goal of the series, which is Jack returning to his own time. All of that is overwhelming enough, but when you add in Scaramouche coming back with plans to tell Aku about Jack's sword, you've got a whopping eight storylines that are still not fully confronted this season. What worries me at this point is that if not handled with proper care, the writers are just gonna be rushing out all of these plot lines into an unfocused conclusion or forgetting about them entirely, which will result in the series finale feeling rushed or not fully fully fulfilling, or both. Like I said earlier, Aku could have easily found out about Jack losing his sword from another source, so all of that time spent on Scaramouche just feels pointless. And with Jack set to get his sword back in the next episode anyway, this whole plot point just feels like a waste of time. So with all that said, does it ultimately make this episode of Samurai Jack bad? Not really. It's actually quite good due to how unique it is compared to others that we've seen this season. Its motive was to develop Ashi's character using a different approach, and for the most part it pays off. It also gives Jack a new resolve and finally gets his spirit under control, so he can focus on fighting Aku and returning to his own time. Hopefully if it's paced well enough, everything will be resolved in an orderly fashion, but that remains to be seen. So thanks again for seeing my review of Samurai Jack. I know this might be a pain to bring up again, but RB Comics still needs donations for his move to BronyCon and promoting his channel. So if you could take some time to check out his update video for more information, I will be leaving a link to it in the description. So until next time, take care of yourselves and have a great day. Misanthropony, over and out.